Welcome. Um, if you joined us a couple of weeks ago for the first part, then great. Welcome back. If you didn't, then it is available in recording where Jonathan does go in much deeper depth um, around um, so, uh, supported decision making. So you might want to get that if you haven't seen it before this one. But today, you know, really, we want to have a little bit of a recap from Jonathan for those that maybe weren't here or need to hear it again. But we really want to illustrate the application of, um, you know, supported decision making in practice. And so we are just thrilled to have a couple of families here um who you know have through this process had businesses started and just super excited to hear from them give you an opportunity to hear how they have navigated this world and also ask them some questions and um so we'll leave time definitely for that at the end but for now, um, yep, Jonathan, we're going to introduce um, Jonathan. He's actually the Senior Director for Law and, Law and Policy for the Burton Blast Institute at Syracuse University um, and leading the efforts to really ensure that older adults and people with disabilities have access to the services and supports they need to lead independent and inclusive lives. Jonathan's Aww. led self-determination projects all across the country. He's educated and trained tens of thousands of older adults, people with disabilities, families and professionals across the country on SDM theory and practice. He's also written and co-written over 60 publications, including the first textbook and first theory to practice guidebook on the subject. So we are honored to have you back, Jonathan, and to give us a recap and anything else to um, talk to us about supported decision making. So turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Nikki. And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. I am excited to talk to you as I was two weeks ago about what I think is my favorite subject, what I think is the most important development for people with disabilities, particularly those who wish to be self-employed since the Americans with Disabilities Act. What I wanna to talk to you about is supported decision-making. As Nikki pointed out, there is an entire hour long webinar with me. So if you have heard it before, great. I'll try not to repeat any jokes today. If you have not, and we say intrigues you, I do recommend you go check out the full recording. So let's talk about what supported decision-making is. Really what it comes down to our choice. If you think about choice, everything in our life, every right we have, everything we do comes down to choice. The quote up on your screen says, I am my choices. We are all the sum total of the choices we make, including the choice to be here today and good choice. But think about it. This good choices, the bad choices, the smart and silly ones, they all add up to who we are. So choice is what makes us who we are. And when we make choices, we are what social scientists call self-determined. Not a big buzzword guy, but I do love this one because self-determined people, people who exercise self-determination make choices. They do things. They choose things instead of having other people do things for them or make choices for them. And when that happens, when you are self-determined, good things happen. Study after study after study for 40 years says that people with disabilities who are self-determined, who make more choices have better lives. They're more likely to be healthy and more likely to be independent, more likely to be safe by resisting abuse. And for the purposes of this webinar, they're more likely to work, more likely to earn more money, and more likely to be involved in managing their money. So I always say that self-determination is the key, the single biggest key to quality of life for people with disabilities. And that's why guardianship can be so dangerous. Um, as I told you last time, I have nothing against guardianship when it's appropriate. Lots of people need guardianship, including my godson. And thank God for that he is in guardianship because it helps him. But for people who don't need guardianship, it can be a very dangerous thing. Because what we know 
is that the vast majority of guardianships take away all people, all, every right the person has. Over 90% of guardianship takes away all of the rights of the person, whether or not the person can exercise those rights, whether or not the person wants to exercise those rights. What happens more than 90% of the time? Our courts just take away all of the person's rights. And that's dangerous because if I don't need my rights taken away, if I'm able to exercise my rights and someone with the best of intentions, someone who has heard that it's their only option asks the court to put me in guardianship and the court does it and takes away all my rights, bad things can happen. Because just like we know that self-determination is the key to a good quality of life, we know the opposite is true, that when you lose self-determination, your life gets worse. We've known for almost 50 years that when people with disabilities lose self-determination, they can feel worse. They can do worse. They can have less activity. They can feel inadequate. Their ability to function can get worse. I mean, think about it this way. If you're a bank and a person under guardianship comes to you to ask for a loan, would you give a business loan to a person who didn't have the legal right to sign a contract? If you were a business, would you enter into a partnership agreement with a company that was led by a person with uh, under guardianship who didn't have the right to make legal decisions? Would you want to work for someone who didn't have the legal right to sign a paycheck? Of course not. So that means that guardianship is neither a good thing nor a bad thing. What it is, is an important thing and should not be taken lightly. Because if a person doesn't need a guardianship, very bad things can happen to that person, including real impacts on their ability to work and make money. So what I'm saying today and what and, and the important part of today is going to be listening to people who've actually made this a part of their lives. But what I'm saying, what I want you to remember is that guardianship can be fine if a person truly needs it. But guardianship, when it's not needed, can hurt people. We know that people who are under guardianships they don't need can have their lives get worse. It can have a negative impact on their physical and mental well-being. They can live longer, they can feel less well. We know that when people have more self-determination, they do better. They're more likely to work, more likely to be independent, more likely to be part of their communities. We know from national studies that among similarly situated people, people who have the same abilities and limitations or similar abilities and limitations, we know that those who do not have guardians across the country are more likely to work than people who do have guardians. They are more likely to live independently than people who do have guardians, more likely to have friends and date and practice the religion of their choice, more likely to be respected and seen as parts of their community than people with similar abilities and limitations that do have guardians. So what I'm talking about today and what you're going to hear people talk about their life experiences with is another way to work with people with disabilities. Another way for people with disabilities to work, and that's called supported decision-making. There is a quote up on your screen about what supported decision-making is. I always joke that I know this one by heart because I wrote it. It's in textbooks, it's in articles, and I hate it. So read it if you want it, take a screenshot if you want. I'd prefer you ignore it because I can tell you what supported decision-making is right now. It's getting help. It's getting help that you need from people you trust so you can understand your situations and make decisions that you have to make. In other words, it's what we all do every single day. People with and without disabilities use supported decision-making every day. We don't call it that because who calls it that? But just think about the cliches we use about making decisions. We tell people to make an informed judgment. We tell people to get a second opinion. We tell people to not make a snap judgment or to go off half cocked. My dad's favorite saying was, if you measure twice, you only have to cut once. They all mean the same thing. Get the help you need 
to do the things you have to do. Because when you get help, you're able to do things better. If there's something you don't understand, you're able to get what you need to understand it. You want the best example? If you've ever asked a doctor to explain something to you in plain language because they spoke jargon, or if you've ever gone to a friend for advice on a personal matter or a financial matter, as I've done, then you're using supported decision-making because there was something you didn't know. And there was something you wanted to know. And you went to someone who you thought could help you know it and do it. So ask this question. When we're thinking about guardianship, I want you to ask this question. If a person can manage a business or make financial decisions when they get help, is a guardian necessary? If a person needs help to make decisions, but can when they get it, do they need a guardian to make decisions for them? And if the answer to that question is no, and it should be no, because if the answer to that question was yes, we'd all need guardians because we all get help when we have business decisions to make. We have a board of directors sometimes to ask questions and get input from. And sometimes we just have friends we ask for advice and input. We all make financial and business decisions with help. Well, if that's a situation, do you need a guardian if you can do it when you get that help? So I always ask people to ask one question before they decide someone needs a guardian. What else have you tried? Have you tried something to empower that person to be able to make decisions? If you think a child or a friend of yours or a parent isn't able to make decisions, how do you know if you haven't tried something to empower that person? And I say that knowing that there are rare and emergency situations where you do know a person in a coma certainly needs a guardian. But the vast majority of times, do you really know if a person can or can't do something unless you've given them a chance? And that's what supported decision making does. And that's what you're going to hear from people who actually use it today. You're going to hear about how supported decision-making helps them understand their options, helps them focus their attention, helps them make a pro and con list to narrow down their options, and helps them understand and make sure that the decisions they're making are the ones that they want to make. They're not just making a snap decision. They're making an informed decision. Because that's what supported decision making is. And here's what I'm really excited to see is people having different ways of using it because everyone uses supported decision making, but we all use it differently. Some of us just talk to a friend. Some of us have what I call go to people. Like I go to a certain friend with financial questions. I go to my sister who is an educational professional to ask about educational stuff for my children. I go to my other sister when we're making decisions uh, with my mom as she's getting older because my other sister is a gerontologist, a specialist in aging. Some people like to have a team. Sometimes we call that a supported decision-making network. Sometimes we call it a, um, a, a, a circle of support or even a micro board when it gets very formal. The key here is that we get people together. We go to the people that we need and we get information from them. And I can't wait to hear how the people you're gonna hear from today do it, what their methodologies are. Because here's something else that we know, is that the studies are showing that when people do this, when they use supported decision-making, their lives get better. Um, one study that I was part of in Virginia, where we worked with young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, we talked to them about supported decision making, helped them form networks, and then said, go work your networks, go live your life and make decisions. And we collected data. And here's what we found out. They all had better lives. They all said they were more confident. They were more independent. They all said they were better at making decisions. The people in their lives, their supporters, often their family members, would say that they were making better decisions. And this study happened in the middle of the pandemic, and the majority said they were doing more things and meeting more people because they were more self-determined. It is not, as I like to say, rocket science. If we empower people, if we give people a chance, if we empower self-determination, great things can happen. And what we know is opportunities for this are all around us. 
if you are going to a doctor, you've no doubt heard the term informed consent, where you get information so you can say, yes, I do want this treatment or no, I don't want that treatment. And that happens through talking with your doctor and talking with your other professionals and advisors. That's just supported decision making. If you are receiving a Medicaid waiver and you've taken part in person centered planning where you've worked with a counselor who tells you your options, tells you what you might want to do, providers you might consider. And you think about that and you choose your goals and objectives and you choose your supports and services based on that advice. That's just supported decision making. If you're in special education and you have an individualized educational program and take part in an IEP meeting where you're giving information to your professionals and receiving it from them and working with a team to make your IEP, that's just supported decision making. And if you are getting job training, have a job coach or working with vocational rehabilitation, the informed choice process is all about supported decision making. So supported decision making is not just an alternative to guardianship. It's a way to live life, to make sure that you are self-determined and give you the best chance to live the best life. And now I can't wait to hear about the people here today, how they do it, and what it's done for their lives. Thank you all so much. I'll be happy to answer questions later. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, and reminder, please do put questions in the chat as you think of them, as you go along, we will get to them and um, hopefully have some time at the end. So now I am so excited to introduce Sierra Ladroma. I probably mess up her name. I just realized I don't say it out loud very much. Um, that she is a senior associate at Griffin and Hammes Associates and a fantastic partner with NDI. She has done so much facilitation for us and um, partnered with us on our small business hub that's funded by the Small Business Administration. Um, prior to working at Griffin Hammes, Sierra did serve as the director of Iowa's Women's Business Center. So lots of self-employment and small business background and history. She's also been a career coach and employment specialist um, and an impressive list of all the things that she's done. So I am going to let Sierra take it and introduce the wonderful folks that we have to hear from. So go ahead, Sierra. Hey there, this is Sierra speaking. Nikki, thank you so much. Um, less about me and more about the four people that I cannot wait to introduce you to. Um, let's go with just the order in boxes on my screen. Um, and we've got Sean and Sonia Rozier. Um, they are the owners of Sean Goes Bananas. More to come on that. I will let them speak about that. Um, and then we've got Michael and Sheila Coyne of Red, White, and Brew. Um, as well as their uh, partnered um, business called The Budding Violet. And I'm sorry, Sonia and Sean are located in Florida. And Michael and Sheila are located in Rhode Island. So we've got the East Coast crew today. Um, so let's get started. Let's get into it. Um, the first question that I have for all of you is to just tell us about your business and what products or services do you offer? Um, Sean and Sonia, do you wanna go first? Sure, thank you so much for having us, Sierra. Um, Sean Goes Bananas is a dessert food trailer that is actually getting ready to come online very soon um, as a result of a wonderful team that we have. Um, we're offering decadent banana pudding and other desserts. We also have a skinny version of it. Um, in addition, we're going to offer um, a red velvet banana pudding cream cake, um, also a banana pudding poke cake, um, a red velvet cheesecake, just lots of different desserts, but our staple and our foundation will definitely be the banana cream pudding um, that came about as a result of me having an allergy or an allergic reaction to the actual banana itself. And so I worked for several years and came up with a recipe because I love banana flavor. And um, so Sean was helping us a few years ago, kind of put some things together for an event. And my husband said, you know, I think we can make this into a business for Sean. And we started kind of strategizing about a name. And um, I was talking to one of his job coaches one day and she kind of helped me kind of hash it out. And there was the birth of Sean Goes Bananas. That's beautiful. I will tell you that I 
just spoke with Sean and Sonia, when was that, last week or earlier this week? And since then, I have been thinking about banana pudding. <laughs> you are in full blame of that because I'm here. Where do I get it? How can I buy this? Should I make it? <laughs> Um, so I cannot wait to visit, um, and experience the banana pudding of Sean goes bananas. Um, thank you so much. So Michael and Sheila, tell us about your business, um, and then what products or services that you offer. Oh God. So me and my mom run red, white, and brew in the Bunny Violet, the red, white, and brew is a coffee shop that we opened because I couldn't get work. Um, and the budding violet. Why did we choose coffee house? Why did we? Because everybody loves coffee. And what do you love? Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what did we need? Um, we needed beans and all that. And we, we did all that. And then we took a business class here in Rhode Island um, for started out for people with disabilities that um, wage employment wasn't for them, uh, self-employment, turning hobbies into work. Um, so a lot of Michael's peers, they'd go through the class and then they'd make a wonderful handmade product and know where to sell it. So Budding Violet became just part of the coffee shop, but like a separate part um, where his peers and other community members that you know would go to farmers markets or whatnot and make handmade items to sell their products. So it's really cool local vendors that make products and sell them. So that's how that's how the whole store and Michael loves food service. Um kind of like Sean, you know, he got into it. We knew that's where his heart was. Um so we we're like let's let's give it a try. Thank you. I know that self-employment has changed all of your lives um, for so much of the better, right? But Michael, your story of what you were doing or maybe not doing before self-employment, um, before opening your businesses, can you share a little bit about that and why self-employment and being an entrepreneur was the choice? I really just slept basically almost all day I wasn't talking much. I wouldn't be making eye contact. Had zero to no friends. Well, you you were in a you were in a day I was in a day program. In a day program, and they would take you to like the library. Yep. And go on a computer that he really didn't know how to use it. Using, he didn't have an email, right? Like this is how we're expecting people to find employment. Um, it wasn't working, you know, it didn't, but that's what they would do. And it checked a box that they were discovering, you know, his, what he liked and what he didn't like. Um, but mind you, I had a full-time job at the time. I didn't understand how the system worked. I have another son who's less than a year older than Michael, who was working. So we never really considered Michael wouldn't get employment. So we were not ready for this. So four years, he tried to find employment, um, got a few interviews one. <laughs> I think you had two one. interviews. No, one. no, because when we had that other one, but they wanted you to work like 11 at night to some crazy. We were like, yeah, yeah, no, that's not. Yeah, that work. was. Um, yeah. So anyway, it just it didn't direction. work. And we just got to the point where um, I'm not going to lie. I was homesick. That's how this worked. I, I needed surgery and it was just me and Michael. And I thought, what do we do with this guy? You know, he can't find work. Um, it's, it's so important to all of our lives, right? We come home, we talk to our family, our spouses, our friends. That's, that's how we get into our community. Um, I can't have this guy not have that. So um, we, ha we had a family meeting and I, we told my husband and my other son, hey, we got a good idea. We're going to open a business. And my husband and son went. Mainly Zach what mainly my brother was because we didn't own a business we didn't know I, I don't even know if I could have spelled entrepreneur at the time my brother was like, the main one that almost well, shot us down because he was concerned right like he we was. had we had we had jobs we both worked for the state we had our benefits that way like he was worried and um we were worried 
but you know what? Sometimes something's put on your heart. Three years. Three years what? We're open. Yeah, yeah. So we did it. We um I was actually still on crutches from that surgery, <laughs> signed on a lease, and um that was it. We didn't know, and here we are. And it's worked. It's um he's become a phenomenal <laughs> human. He's part of the world. He's talks and we'll be out in restaurants and you know people will come up to the table and they're like hey i know you but what a world it's opened up and um you know to the gentleman that opened up this webinar um just makes sense right again this isn't rocket science like let's all treat each other with courtesies and 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 give everyone a spot in the world and now we all belong and we flourish and we have things to talk about and we're connected and it's worked. We've seen self-employment uh, people flourish. Just um, it's it's been phenomenal here in Rhode Island. Um, we're so lucky. Thank you so much. So uh, Shauna and Sonia, can you tell us about the self-employment journey and why and how Sean Goes Bananas happened? Yeah, um, actually, I wanted to clarify that Sean is under guardian advocacy. Um, I think my attorney is on the call as well. But um, here in Florida, I don't think supportive decision making is yet recognized. So we have guardian advocacy of Sean. We have had that since he was 18 years old. Um, he does retain the right to vote. But everything regarding Sean Goes Bananas and anything regarding you know his life, his situation, he has been involved with making the decision. Um, our entire team, from our CVTAC consultant, Monica, to our attorney, to his job coaches, um, everyone knows that Sean has been involved from the logo design um, to the trailer design. But um, Sean's story is very similar in some ways to Michael. Um, he had three years of culinary um, at our local high school in a rural area south of Tallahassee. And um, I just didn't see any opportunities you know, for him. Um, so we have a, a really good friend that owns, if you guys are familiar with Small Cakes, it's a franchise. But... One of our friends owns two locations in Tallahassee. And so two years before Sean graduated, and I approached him and I said, you know, I don't think any opportunities are coming, but if, you know, if they don't, then would you consider Sean coming and working at Small Cakes? And um, so he did, and he still, he actually left there today a couple hours ago, but he still goes in and he works there and he's done a really good job. And um, we've been able to really see him flourish. And that was, you know, also one of the, um, the driving forces behind self-employment. Um, my niece had a tag on one of her emails that said, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. But in our case, opportunity didn't knock, but we built a food trailer. And um, with the help of um, CBTAC, um, Certified Business Technical Assistance Consultant through VR, um, and our awesome, awesome business consultant, um, Monica, who is also out of Iowa and Florida. She's a snowbird here with us during, um, during the winter. But um, we were able to put together a really, really good business plan and um, I think we went through the process in less time than most people take because I was just so determined. So we were able to receive support from VR, but my husband and I had already decided, you know, he had just retired. Regardless of what happens, we're going to fund this. We're going to do this. And um, Sean is so excited. We had a photo shoot last week. And, you know, I'm hoping that what we see with Michael, um, you know, happens with Sean because pre pre previously before COVID, Sean was very social. He loved to go, you know, his job coaches, everybody knows that. And after COVID, it just, it really just kind of, he went into a shell, almost regressed quite a bit. So one of my goals um, for Sean Goes Bananas is to really reacclimate him um, to the community, reintroduce him to the community and really give him that level of independence that I know, you know, that, that he's able to, to handle. Sean, I know that you are in the beginning parts of your business, yes, and I just saw the pictures on your Facebook page. Yes, so if y'all want to check that out, um, you could pull up Facebook and search for Sean Goes Bananas. Just heads up that it is still very much in creation phase, <laughs> um, but you can check out the logo and you could check out the amazing photo shoot. Um, that popped up, I think this morning or last night, and I just was just, just cheering for you from afar. Um, I love the pictures. Yeah, we have an amazing team. Um, our attorney has been wonderful. And I think with him having a background and expertise in special needs planning, um, he did our estate planning, he did Sean's garden advocacy, 
And the good thing that he explained to me about that, you know, we can always go in and make changes if we want to return or restore. That's the good thing about garden advocacy. And that's what I hope for my son is that we can restore some of those rights. But God forbid if he goes in and signs a contract and, you know, he's on the, on the, you know, on the hook for a $50,000 car. Those are the things we wanted to prevent someone, you know, taking advantage of him. So garden advocacy is not quite full guardianship, but it still gives us that flexibility um, to revisit, you know, as we do annually. So it really Absolutely. helped. We had an attorney that specialized and he's been our, it's been comp a comprehensive situation with him because he's handled the business, setting that up. Everything has just flowed, you know, just really, really smoothly. That actually leads us into the next question that I have for all of you um, is that circle of support that helped you get to self-employment. So Sonia and Sean, you've mentioned um, the CBTAC, VR, uh, your attorney. Who else was there? Who, oh who kind of stood Sean. behind you and beside you? Yes, who are still like there. Yeah. <laughs> who are still there right now. Um, yeah. Sean's job coaches, um, Future Pathways, they have been phenomenal. And it did help that they were his teachers, you know, previously to them um, starting Future Pathways, which helps um, adults with disabilities, um, with transition and jobs and, um, you know, supporting employment for the most part. Um, we also have um, Neuro Consultant Solutions, who basically came in and put a, ta a very detailed task analysis together for Sean. This is what you do when you walk through the door of the dessert food trailer. This is how you wash your hands. This is how you put your apron on. This is how you layer the pudding. Very detailed, specific things, um, visual supports that really help him. Even, you know, at small case, he still uses his visual supports from time to time. But um, we have a wonderful circle. Um, also someone who's doing social media for us, um, who updated the Facebook page. I know nothing about social media. So we have someone who's helping us with that. But um, we just have a phenomenal team and I'm so thankful and we, we're just really blessed. Um, and I really believe that our community, they're just waiting. You know, my professor, I met with her today and she said, let me know, she lives two blocks from me. I need to know when is this trailer coming online? You know, mm -hmm. because we're ready to support it. So I think our community is gonna also be a part of our circle of support. Absolutely. And I'm so glad, um, Sonia, that you mentioned, although you are guardian um, advocacy set up, you two have been so creative in making sure that you're using these supported decision-making um, strategies to really prioritize, Sean, your choice and what you really want to do uh, with your business and your life. So thank you so much um, for pointing that out. So Michael and Sheila, I have already met some of your biggest cheerleaders from Rhode Island that we've had a great time. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna bring them up again yeah. now because yes. tell um, us the circle yeah, of support. Go ahead, talk about it. So my circle of support is my mother, my father, my brother, my cousins, my grandparents, support staff, my Sue Babin. Uh, he says Sue Babin, like everyone knows Sue Babin. That's what that that's what he thinks. She's like such a powerhouse that he thinks that, she, that like, she's Sierra. like Oprah, right? Like uh, saying that to Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean it's amazing the people that you've had. Um, who else you've had? Um, support staff. You said um, Claudia. Claudia has helped. Um, just the community. We didn't expect just the um, the support of the community. We opened right before COVID. If we, if Michael had not made those connections with customers, we, we wouldn't be open today. We wouldn't be, we would not have made it because we don't have a drive through. I mean, you guys remember those early dark days, you know, people didn't want to come in. Um, it was, it was scary. I thought, oh my goodness, here goes. Cause I put my retirement money into this. So I was like, oh goodness, in less than six months, that was a, it was an expensive try. <laughs> so, you know, but he, Michael had made friendships. So they were more than customers. It was more than community came in and supported him. Um, it, it, that's how it worked. But in Rhode Island, we're very lucky to have a very, I call it robust. I don't know because I don't know anything else. And I, I'm new to this whole disability thing, but for supported decision making, um, you know, Rhode Island, we have it um, right on our general laws. You can go on and you can get the template. And um, but we were doing supported decision making 
before we realized it was a thing. And, you know, again, to, I think his name is Jonathan's point. Um, we're all doing this, right? We're all, his brother, we've supported in a million different ways, but we didn't sit down and call it anything. We didn't, um, I asked, you know, my son, Zachary, since he was five, what do you want to be when you grow up? We didn't call it person-centered. It's just how we treat people. So in Rhode Island, we were lucky. Um, we didn't do guardianship, but probably because I'm a hot mess and we just <laughs> never got it because in high school, we didn't get other options. We didn't talk about, you don't get pamphlets and say, you know, here. In fact, there was a conversation that Michael had with me when we decided not to do guardianship that he felt slighted. He felt like we didn't love him enough because his friends were having guardianship with their parents and why wouldn't we do it for him? And that's hurtful because you don't know someone else's perspective. And I was like, honey, no, no, that's not it. We'll always support you. But I want you to, I'm not always going to be here. So if we're not going to teach you small ways to make decisions now. And it comes up in some of these questions, like, how did you do it with your business? Uh, we didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what's the difference between an LLC and an S corp and a C corp and a sole proprietor. How could I? So it wasn't like, oh, Michael with a disability doesn't get to decide. No, we went and we sought professional advice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's just what we did. Um, I'm not really great with the books, you know. So yeah, his, my grandmother. his grandmother does that kind of thing, you know, and she'll be like, whoa, 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 no more spending this week. Um, you know, <laughs> we're getting low in the bank or or whatever. She, that's just what she's good at. Michael he's the customer service guy, right? Do you want me in charge? She of customer hates service? talking to people. Me, on the other hand, they can't get me to shut up. He loves it. He loves, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's what he, you know, Michael, that's what, the register. I, I, it'll take me 12 minutes to ring you out on the coffee. I don't know how to Three do it. Minutes. Seconds. He just, um, he's just, he's good at technology. So, you know, I, while I think it's valuable that we're all making decisions and we're supporting one another um it's just the right way to, to treat humans you know so I don't want people to get scared and what does it mean and is it a big thing um no it's how you would want to be treated and we were doing it like but like I said in Rhode Island um and if anyone wanted to go on that website it's clear and how do you do it and you know it just really dictates who's going to be on your team uh, Michael's very fortunate has a full team uh, you know, sometimes you might have to be a little more thoughtful about that. You know, if you don't have a grandmother that does finances, you know, maybe it's it's a friend from church or, um, mm -hmm. you know, someone you went to school with that they help you with finances and somebody else helps you with different decisions. Um, so, you know, it's important to build a good team, but it's what we're all we, with or without a disability. That's good information and it's good advice. It sounds like all four. Now, I was going to say, I think entrepreneurship is now, you know, post COVID becoming, you know, almost just an accepted norm. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people are kind of branching out and doing their own thing. So, why shouldn't our community, you know, individuals with disabilities have that opportunity as well? And also, I think we need to do a better job of encouraging that um, via the VR counselors that, you know, maybe you are looking to self employment or supported self employment, not just like you talked about earlier, Sheila, that regular wage job just doesn't work for everyone. Um, we've just been very fortunate that, you know, our friend owned, you know, a cupcakery that Sean could go and work at that basically fit his needs. It wasn't overstimulated for him. They were very supportive of him. But, you know, God forbid, you know, he had ended up in a different placement and people were not as accommodating. So I think we need to do a, a better job of just saying, you know what, self-employment may be an option. Let's explore this. And there are resources out there to support um, individuals that are specifically clients of VR, you know, with supported self-employment. Absolutely. I agree. I'm sorry, Sierra. I just wanted to say that. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you did. Um, it's so great to share space with all four of you because although you have different formal setups, you are clearly using similar strategies to make sure that Michael and Sean, you are the boss. You're leading here. Um, and you are making sure that, hey, I want this and not that. And I want life to look like this. Um, and both of you, uh, Sheila and Sonia, are saying, let's make it happen. 
Um, so I would love to hear from both of you if you could share how you use um, supported decision making or guardian advocacy uh, supports outside of your business. Um, so just general life decisions. Um, let's go with Sonia and Sean. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting that you asked that because outside of the business, um, Sean, you see his shirt says inclusion without limits. He's very active in FSU Best Buddies. And um, since the business has you know, started to come online, I mentioned to him earlier today, I said, you know, Sean, they have a Valentine's event, you know, next Thursday for Best Buddies. Don't you want to go? I don't want to go, mom. The music is too loud. I don't want to go. You know what? He has that right. You know, I can't just usurp him and say, hey, you know, you're going to go. But he has that right to make that decision. So, you know, outside of the business, um, we allow him to make those decisions. Um, whatever it is he'd like to do, as long as it's, he's safe, as long as it's legal, absolutely. Um, we support him in that. And um, utilizing the guardian advocacy in a way that, you know, it's basically just our guideline that we're not standing over him saying you can't do this or you have to do this. Um, really giving him that freedom to be independent because, as Sheila mentioned earlier, you know, we're not going to be here always. Um, I know we want to say if something happens, but let's just all be realistic. Something is at some point going to happen um, to all of us. And um, I'm so thankful that our attorney, you know, that's something that I know we'll be talking about in estate planning as we continue on with when the business takes off. Okay, now what happens to Sean Goes Bananas, you know, when something happens? So, um, so yeah, we're allowed to utilize bargain advocacy to assist Sean and to support him in his decisions. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Michael and Sheila, what about you two? With the supported decision-making um, setup, how do you two support each other in making decisions outside of business? How do, how do we do it? How do we, everything to, uh, from what are we having to dinner to- We just sport, talk about it. What sport are you going to do for Special Olympics, right? I mean- Yeah, we just discuss it. We've had family meetings with our kids since they were little, like anytime there was any, we never decided where to go on vacation without a family meeting. Uh, what it's, it's just what it always was. So again, it feels funny now that we're putting like letters on it and, and calling it something. And, um, you know, cause I don't even think Michael understands the 18 times a day we do it. You know, it's just, you know, today I pick out lunch tomorrow. You get to pick out lunch. You know, um, we were super lucky that we don't, it's kind of, it's just us, you know, like we don't have a lot of push and pull. I don't have like eight other children, you know, and Michael gets left in the, you know, Michael's very lucky. He gets to make a lot of decisions just because he's got those freedoms. Um, you know, even when your brother lived with us, it was no angst. We just, we, we just bought a new car. Who got to decide? Right. Nice. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, it, it's <laughs> just the way, you know, he and I are in it most of the time. So what do you like, Michael? Get in the back, you know, so if, if we're with his dad, he's in the back seat. Well, guess what he said? That back seat better be heated, <laughs> you know? So, okay. All right. Then, then that's what we put. So it's just how, how we live and it's really made for a much better experience for us. Um, again, I didn't, I'm not a professional and we didn't understand when he was in high school and he had so many problems and I don't think puberty helps these guys. And then there's, you know, there's rage and there's, mm -hmm. he was bigger than me. And, you know, life was scary for a bit. Life was scary. My, Michael couldn't live at home. He was in a group home. Um, I didn't know what his future looked like. And I said, you know what, let's, let's just give this a try. I'm going to give all my time to this guy and, and look, that and it's not always beautiful. Believe me, some days it's this, some days it's this, um, you know, it's hard, right? And now they can't get me to be quiet. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> But, you know, it's just, we wouldn't have had any other option but self-employment, you know, someday, it, even at our coffee shop. I'm not, I don't want anyone to think like, oh, every day is like glitter and, you know, rainbows. It's not. Um, there are some days Michael's like, oh, I don't want to go. All right. Well, listen, supported decision-making doesn't mean he gets to make decisions like, oh, today we're not opening. You know, we have to open. That's just the way it goes. Um 
you know, and he's cranky and we have to get through it. Um, so it's, but he wouldn't have a lot of those leeways in regular wage employment, you know, for some of his bad days or so I have bad days, but sometimes we're, we can better mask that, or we can better manage them, or, you know, we can kind of talk ourselves through it. Michael would have a much more difficult time. Um, so just being his own boss and being able to walk away and, and, and take a breath, you know, he hasn't always been treated kindly at the register. There's been a couple of times mm -hmm. yeah. people were rude about his disability or made disparaging comments, or, um, you know, don't, don't anyone think that, uh, you know, make this choice and, you know, it's the golden ticket. It's not, but it's, it's been a better life for Michael. Um, I couldn't picture him working and we don't have a lot of good opportunities in Rhode Island. You know, he would either put carriages in a line into the stores, you know, we all do that. But other than that, you know, so that's what's happened. And we just make every decision just kind of together. Or go into like a restaurant and do food prep for a year. And then you think, oh, I'm going to apply for this job. Four years of applying for that one position and I got nothing. Yeah. You know, they didn't mind the year when he was in school services. Letting, Doing it for free. Letting him work for free. And then mm -hmm. when it was time to, and, you know, Michael had the expectation that, you know, he did a good job and he was always there and he was on time. Called out when sick. That he would right you that he would get and and we didn't either I didn't know people with disability like I didn't know that that's how life was call mm -hmm. me naive call me you know uh, I just didn't understand that that's how it was so when I saw him being treated that way you know right mama bear comes out mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're like <laughs> so, so Michael and Sean I know that you two have to make decisions about your business every day, multiple times a day about the smallest things and maybe some things that are big, kind of like construction or moving. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear from y'all about, um, and we can start with Sonia and Sean, how do you use your guardian advocacy to make business decisions about Sean Goes Bananas? Hmm. Well, you know, I, I, I mentioned to Molly when she asked me about doing this, I was like, you never yeah. thought about Sean's guardian advocacy having an effect on him having supported self-employment. Um, the way we've used it mostly is, you know, the, the first time I saw it in action was um, a few weeks ago when I went to set up his bank account. And um, my attorney assured us that, hey, take this operating agreement. Um, if you look up, up on Sunbiz, I'm listed as the manager, um, the registered agent. So it made it so much easier. You know, um, there were no issues, no problems. Um, so guardian advocacy, you know, I, I did have the documents just in case the bank wanted to see them. And it's been the same way with setting up, you know, other types of, um, you know, accounts and contracts um, as it pertains to the business. But it really hasn't affected it in that way. I think if you're up front and say, this is what the situation is, um, you know, this is basically the authority I have. And, um, and they know that I look at it from this perspective. If I have guardian advocacy of my son, I only have his best interest at heart. So obviously, if I have an operating agreement, I'm not going to go in and you know mismanage his funds or mismanage his business because I have have always had his best interest at heart. You know, even been in the guardian advocacy for the last four years, I've continued to have his best interest at heart. So, um, so yeah, that's how the guardian advocacy kind of affects us with the business um, day to day. Um, and like I said, I never even really thought about it, but you know, as I think Alex, our attorney, would say, it's not a problem until it's a problem. So, <laughs> but as of right now, it has not affected us um, in, in any way. Um, having the garden advocacy. We've just been able to do um, business as, as normal. Um, what I did want to say, just commenting on what Michael and Sheila said um, earlier <laughs> about self-employment, um, Sean walked in today and gave, who'd you give business cards to? To Sydney and Mr. Brent. To Sydney and Mr. Brent. Like, hey, here are my business cards. He was so proud of them when he walked in small cakes today. I'm like, hey, you're at your job and you're talking about your business, you know? <laughs> but I love it that, you know, he took that initiative to do that. And um, you know, this, I think it increases self-determination, um, self-advocacy, um, self-efficacy, all of that self-employment does that. And I think that if we do this for 10, 15 years, you know, 
we shouldn't be afraid to change course and maybe look at doing something different for his um, supported self-employment. So, um, but, but that's how gardening advocacy has affected us um, in our day to day. But like I said, it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. And I thank God for our great team because once it becomes an issue, like Sheila said, I'll go to who I need to go to to advise me about that. Thank you. I am so happy to hear that both of you have such supportive teams, um, both just in your families, but also professional help. Um, because it's very important to point out that an entrepreneur, any entrepreneur, cannot do every part of their business. Uh, it's not healthy, um, and it's and it's honestly not possible, at least in my opinion. Um, and so we need a team. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mike and Sheila, can you share how y'all use supported decision making? Um, to make decisions about running your business. <laughs> I always have to talk. <laughs> um, talk about like, how did we just like on anything? How did we, how do we decide like we, what, what coffee to get? How many places did we go? We went to a, how many coffees did we try? To Enough to make you sick of coffee. Right. Like it's just, and that's me saying something because mm -hmm. I love coffee. Yeah, so. but it's, yeah, like we don't ever go, okay, uh, where's that contract? Right. Uh, today, Michael, it's your day. Um, no. Nope. You know, like, I'm just trying to think of just some, some thing like, like, okay, so as we're, we're open, um, we decided to add smoothies just as, as an example, you know, we started coffee and then we were able, you know, we just kind of sat down. Well, what do you like? If you went somewhere, what would you water? You know, okay, let's work on that. You know, same. Yep. He's like, Oh mom, you like chocolate and peanut butter. Let's try and come up with something like that. So we've just, everything has been, but it was the same thing with our family, right? I'll have grandma come over. Let's, you know, how does she try? Yeah. You know, it's not just us. It's, it's our entire family. Mm -hmm. our, our business name was that way. Remember we had a family dinner one night. There was like 15 of us sitting around the kitchen and we just bantered around names, you know? And then we uh, finally came up with uh, red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. Plus like we're military, uh, we're police fire. Like mm -hmm. we're probably more American than anybody could ever. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. We're <laughs> just because of that name go america like uh, we're more of an american business like our roasters they're from new uh what new hampshire yeah yeah so we try and do all like real local we try and you know the farm we use is you know right. a, a local farm for for the milk um we try to be mindful of that um our our other store name budding violet my grandfather is bud and my grandmother is vi so it just became, you know, so we just, we're always, always thinking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have crazy ideas and he goes, oh, no, 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 that's right. And sometimes he has a crazy idea and I go, oh, no, 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 no. So, you know, it's just. No crazy ideas in this world. No, 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 we don't want those. We don't want those. Those are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All of you have said, you know, we never really thought of this verbiage before because this is something that we've been doing of what do you want to do and let's make it happen. Um, and so that's great. So I know that there are a lot of teams and even other mothers or parents or caretakers uh, joining us today. And they have a lot of questions of if we do this, how do we really do those um, the details like formal legal documents or Sonia, you mentioned before opening a bank account. How do we handle doing things like signing agreements with um, the different structures that you have? So Sonia and Sean, you have the guardian advocacy. Um, Michael and Sheila, you have the supported decision making. I would love if, if you could just talk about what happens or what is the process when you have to sign those big agreements or those legal documents. Mm -hmm. Sonia and Sean, would you mind going first? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I am so thankful for Alice Gill, who is our attorney, and he kind of guided us through that. 
Um, and, and his wife had a background working with individuals with autism. You know, he has a background in special needs, um, working with families that had special needs. So that was instrumental um, with us. Um, he was able to establish our LLC, put all that together. I just wanted to make sure that it was done correctly. I'm sure it's probably something I could have gone online and done, but I wanted to make sure that it was someone who was familiar with our situation because of the structure that is set up. Um, so, you know, mainly with um, the operating agreement that we have, that's the way I am able to sign documents. Um, the only thing that Sean has been signing so far has been um, the authorizations that have come back, like, for example, from Vote Rehab, when we do reimbursements from Vote Rehab. Um, you know, my CB Tech consultant, you know, he's been allowed, she said, oh, we can sign those. And I mean, I'm there, you know, with him. And uh, he's basically listed as a vendor with them. But when it comes to um, like with the bank account, um, he is listed on there. Um, but I, you know, am basically in charge of the account. I am the manager um, on, like I said, on Sunbiz as it's registered. So, um, but just making sure, you know, he, he knows that, hey, last week we set our account up. You know, next week we're going to work with the people on the point of sale system. They're going to design something specifically for you. So um, just really keeping, you know, Sean involved um, with every aspect of the business, but, um, but just making sure that operating agreement is kind of like our guiding document um, if something comes up as far as signing contracts and things like that. You mentioned before too, that it's just so much easier when you're just upfront with it. Yes. So when you were at the bank, you explained yes. This is who we are. This is what our goal is. This I is went how with we're the folder like this. Like, oh hey, God. here it is. I have guardian advocates of him. Um, my attorney said, give you this operating agreement. This is what the situation is. This is what the structure is. He immediately went to Sunbiz, looked it up, found out that I was the registered agent, listed as the manager. My title is manager. And um, he said, oh, we're good. You know, you have the authorization and the authority um, to open this account, you know, to manage this account. So, you know, just being upfront um, with individuals that you're going to contract with. I'm sure down the line, there may be some issues, but there again, that goes back to having that great team that we have, mm. um, with my CVTAC consultant, with our attorney, with everyone that's been involved. You know, this is their area of expertise. This is who I need to go to and ask about this before I make any type of move. Um, you know, I want to make sure that I am doing it correctly, but getting the right advice from individuals that are familiar with it. Thank you so much. Sure. So Michael and Sheila, same question to both of you. With the supported decision making set up, how do you go about or how did you go about um, signing legal documents or agreements or even business insurance and things like that? So for us, we first went um, to an accountant to say, what, do, what kind of a structure do we even want? So we have a corporation, so we're under Budding Violet Incorporated. So everything falls under that. As far as all the big contracts and documents and I sign, um, I couldn't get Michael to sit through two paragraphs. Um, so call it what you want, but we're not going to be foolish either, right? I mean, we have to be mindful. We have to be, we didn't know if this was going to work. Um, I certainly wouldn't want anything bad on Michael's you know, either financial record or credit report, or did he even have credit, right? I mean, he didn't even have a job. So he couldn't have signed for any kind of a business loan or anything like that anyway. So all the big stuff, um, I just automatically would sign for it in the beginning um, as things. And I don't know that he would even have been ready for that. And then as things um, grew, like, we'd get a delivery, remember UPS and like some of the stuff he'd have to sign. And he's like, mom, can I sign? Of course you can. Let's, let's kind of like start with that. And I think it's things like that, that, um, you know, get them ready. I, you can't take a kid who, you know, five weeks before was sleeping on the floor of a day program and then say, okay, here's your business contract. Um, it's, it, that's, it, you know, can't. Mm -hmm. So as we've grown, um, that's how it's worked. Now, also with our business, everything we've made, we put back into the business. So we've kept growing. We've now relocating. If you looked up our social media, you're going to be like, oh my God, how do these people exist? Um, cause it's a lot, it's a lot to keep up on. Um, but we're moving into bigger space. We're moving into the middle of the state. Um, so we haven't had to worry about, you know, profits or anything like that. We've upgraded equipment. When we started, we got a lot of secondhand things. You know, I got things on auctions. Um, 
So we've been lucky to kind of kind of do that. But anything that is potentially could have a legal ramification, I take it and will build up Michael's, you know, his knowledge is because I have no knowledge base in it at, as well. But I, I can, you know, take the hit a little bit easier than Michael could. And as I learn from people, I can teach Michael. And then we'll set him up for, you know, bigger decisions. But right now we're 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 making smoothies, right? <laughs> Perfect. So again, for the for the families and teams and different groups tuning in today or even in the future, because this is recorded and will be available. Um, one of the questions I know will happen is where do we start? Like we have this idea now, who would you two or who would you four suggest are maybe the top three people to reach out to or to seek advice from? Um, because you all have such great teams, right? But how did you get there? Who did you reach out to first? Um, Sonia and Sean, let's go with you. Yeah, I'll be really brief on that. I was just an interesting story. Um, I work full time for the Center for Autism at Florida State. And um, I was researching for a presentation. And so I ordered this book from Disabilities Rights Florida. And when I opened the cover um, a couple of holidays or Christmases ago, there was an article in there about Griffin Hammers. And that was how I found out about Griffin Hammers. So they were my first point of contact, talking about you know, self-employment and what they did and all of that. And um, you know, I would definitely suggest Griffin Hammers for sure. Um, they were the ones that put me in touch with, I would say, the most phenomenal um, CBTAC consultant, um, Monica Doyle. I'm just going to go ahead and say her name um, out loud. She probably doesn't want me to, but they're going to come a calling. Um, you know, she was my, the next person I reached out to. And then um, thirdly, I would say definitely in our attorney. Um, you know, those would be my top three people. Um, you know, you have a team in terms of, you know, Sean's job coaches, um, all of them. We ask for input from them. Um, from Neuro Consultant Solutions, um, Sylvia Gill, um, all the people I trusted. But I would say those were my three, first three go-tos. Griffin Hammers, who can provide you with so much information on self-employment. And, um, you know, Russell Sipples, who can use his persuasion, all Monica, to take me on, um, you know, as a client. Because initially when I called her, she was like, let me hear your spiel. You know, I was kind of prepared to tell you no, but I'm going to tell you yes. I said, yes. I had my little two minute elevator speech and hey, you know, we've become, she's become my sister from another mother at this point. We're so close, we're like two peas in a pod. But I would definitely recommend, um, you know, just seeking out, you know, legal help if you need it. And then we also have an accountant um, that has come on board as well, because that, as Sheila said, you know, that's not my area of strong suit. So hire somebody who it is and mm -hmm. um, allow them to work with you. And I think when you're honest up front and say, this is the situation, this is what we're trying to do people are willing to really work with you and help you. So, but those would be my top three. Perfect. Thank you. I love that you mentioned being realistic about what you can do, what you're great at, and then finding help and the pieces that you aren't good at <laughs> um, in order to continue running your business. I love that. Thank you. So Michael and Sheila, same question to you. Who would you say are the top three or what is your advice in finding the team members in order to really start. You want me to go again? Yes. Um, so I don't know how it is in any other state. Again, I'm just kind of learning. Um, for us, the Rhode Island Developmental Disabilities Council was our starting point because that's where we met Sue Babin. That's who um, started the self-employment classes. Um, that's what Michael went through. We went through eight classes of, you know, are you sure you want to own a business? Um, marketing, target market, social media, business plan. Um, God, we sit through these every quarter, you think, <laughs> elevator pitch, um, you know, and then we help. So now I'm a consultant on that team. Michael's one of the instructors on that team. Um, and we help other um, individuals with disabilities who say, listen, I'm not finding a job, but I love woodworking or I make the best lemonade or, you know, my greeting cards, they, they're out of this world. Um, so I don't know how it is in every state, but I can say if you have a DD council, I know they can find us in Rhode Island and we can 
help with that. Cause it's not, again, it's not that complicated. Um, but that's where we started. And then in Rhode Island, we also have um, free help. Like we have Center for Women in Enterprise and, and places like that where entrepreneurs can get free help. That was helpful for us in the very beginning. Um, but often it's other parents. You know, it's not so much that I need business advice, but sometimes I just need advice to get through one more day. You know, it's it's hard. You know, it's sometimes it's tiring. Um, I don't have all the answers. Um, so I just think if you have a, a good network of other people that know your struggle, um, we have, you know, I have Sue Babin as a friend. We also have Claudia Lowe who teaches the classes with us. If I didn't have those two women in my life, we wouldn't be sitting here as a success story for Michael. You know, so I think... I think those are important. And, you know, if there's anyone on this call that I can be that for someone, you know, because I feel as we all learn and we share with the next family or the next individual, um, you know, I hope in 10 years, we look back on this and go, oh my God, we were so far, you know, and, and self-employment and people just working that have disabilities isn't a story, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I would like to see. And that that's our advice. Oh, and and Doug Crandall from Griffin Hammes, right? <laughs> um, you know, I, they there was again, but we didn't we wouldn't have made those connections without our DD council. Um, I wouldn't have known about any resources. So. I think it's so beautiful that all of you shared just how invested these team members became almost immediately in your success, right? The, it, it was started with a phone call or an email. And then it was, these are our friends. These are our people who belong in our circle who get us through the day. Whether it's just, I'm having a bad day and I need to talk through this, or here's a really big business decision and I need professional guidance. Um, that's wonderful. All right. So a um, couple questions left for all of you. What is one piece of advice that you would have for that inspiring entrepreneur plus their team who wants to pursue owning a business, but maybe he's just a little hesitant in order to do so? What is one piece of advice, um, Michael, that you would have? Just keep at it, follow your dreams. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, honestly. Perfect. Sean, what about you? You would just say to, to tell people about their business or mm -hmm. just something to keep going? To keep going. To persevere, maybe? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I, I would definitely share with them, to persevere. When I first approached our VR counselor, when mm -hmm. I learned about CB Tech through Griffin Hammers, she was very discouraging, I'll be frank. <laughs> and um, I said, no. And I talked with Russell, and he said, give me 20 minutes with her, and I promise you I'll convince her different. So she'll feel more comfortable with the process. Um, mm -hmm. So I would just say, just persevere and continue. Because even um, after, you know, our CV tag and we got through with the business plan, there was still a lag. Like, okay, is this going to happen? What's going on? But just continue to persevere and don't give up. That, that's the thing I would say to anyone. Um, always follow your gut. If this is a passion that you have, um, step out and just try. You know, there's no harm in mean, feeling. The harm is not trying. So I would say just step out and just try. And there are lots of people out there that will come on board and support you, like the Disabilities Council um, here in Florida, Disabilities Rights Florida. Um, but just, just reach out. And if you have a great VR contact, um, I would say start there. If you're a client of VR, that's a great place to start. And if you have a VR counselor that responds to you and that is um, you know, supportive of you, then you're very fortunate. And I would say use that to your advantage. But just continue to persevere. If this is a dream of yours, so reach out to someone, feel free to, I, I am more than happy. I want, my goal for Sean Goes Bananas is to be a model in Northwest Florida for what can be and what is possible. So I am more than happy um, to share our story and to share our resources and what has worked for us here in Florida. Thank you so much for that. Sure. Michael and Sheila, what about you? What is one piece of um, advice that you would have? I guess we've already talked about that. 
keep going. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going and ask you the same question. Um, I guess it wasn't that inspiring. Huh? We can try it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just so glad that y'all mentioned all of the teams again. Um, that has helped you get to where you are today because they're the champions too, right? So Sue uh, and Monica um, and everyone else that you had you had brought up. So there is a lot of action happening in the chat if you haven't uh, taken a look yet. And so I personally have one more question um, for all of you. For Sean and Sonia, what is one way that everyone here can support Sean Goes Bananas? Oh, well, we're hoping to get up and going in the next couple of weeks. We're waiting for our um, trailer to come in with the wrap. That's the last stage. And um, just go to our Facebook page. As Sierra mentioned earlier, it's still very skeletal. It is very new. And I'm almost afraid to admit, I can't even tell you about the Instagram. <laughs> Because the person we hired to do it, she has access to that. And I don't have access to that. But I think we're at Sean Goes Bananas at Instagram. Um, our website, if you log on, is SeanGoesBananas.com. Um, it says new website coming soon. And so um, I'm sure our, our website person um, who handles all of our marketing materials, um, her name is Tanya Cropper. Um, she's going to get that up and going. So she has all the narrative. She has all the pictures. But that's the one thing people can do um, to support it. Um, my goal is at some point that we can actually be shipping nationwide. You know, I, I hate to mention Magnolia Bakery out of New York, but my God, I want to be like them, able to ship my banana cream pudding, you know, nationwide overnight so that people can enjoy it, um, you know, when it's fresh. So, um, but that's the one thing they can do right now. Um, go to our Facebook page and like us and um, follow us. And hopefully you will be hearing in the next couple of weeks about all the wonderful things that we have going. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Michael and Sheila, how can we support Red, White and Brew and Budding Violet? By going to our Facebook, which is Red, White, Brew, RI, and our Instagram is Red, White, Brew for you. And you're going to go to those and you're going to go, oh, it doesn't seem like they're doing a lot. But like I said, we've been in the middle. She doesn't of, like posting. She's uh, not big on social media. Trying. Today's she likes be, the media part, just not the social. Today, today will be my first day. If I can get five of you to go and like the page, I'm gonna I'm gonna post. Today will be my first day. All right. Um, but same way. Um, once we're up and running, you know, we'll have coffee that we can ship. Um, we'll have t-shirts. Um, they're gonna be super cool. Um, but It'll be fun, but we're just in that, like, we Good hopefully, uh, within great. two weeks, we hope to have all of our final inspections done and the doors open. So that's our, maybe three weeks, because then we got to order the food and, and get the place stocked. But um, we're at the very end of this process, so we're excited to open. You're excited to open yeah. more than I am. Do you it, miss work? Yes, I missed it very much. I bet. Okay. Thank you for so much just expertise and knowledge and sharing your journey. Um, I would love to shift us into the Q&A portion. Um, and so I just need to take a quick look at the questions here. But I think Molly Sullivan, my colleague, is going to help out. Yeah. Um, all right, Molly. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Molly. Um, colleagues with Sierra at Griffin Hamas. And um, I just I just have to just really quickly say, it has been such a joy to listen to the four of you share your experiences. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, I just, I wanna go run out and start a business right now. I'm so inspired by you all. <laughs> <laughs> Although there aren't enough hours in the day for that, so I'm not gonna do it, but <laughs> there are a few more I might. Um, so there are some questions. I do want to share this just fantastic comment, though, that Jenny left earlier. I, I, you may not have seen it. And so she planted this wonderful idea, which is um, that she wants Michael and Sean to co-create a YouTube channel on how to work with others to start a business. Isn't that great? Yeah, you are inspiring. What you're doing is fantastic. So yeah, very great. Um, so there are a couple questions, so I want to pop to those. Um, the first one I've got is, um, are either of you receiving Social Security benefits, um, and what impact has 
has there been on the benefits? And then I would just add on to the end of that, if it's okay, um, are you working with anybody to help you understand the effect of your business on your benefits, if you do have them? And how about let's start with um, Sean and Sonia first, if that's okay. Um, well, Molly, isn't that an appropriate question for you? Because Molly mm -hmm. Sullivan with Griffin Hammers has been my go-to um, for social security. Um, yes, Sean does receive SSI. Um, and the main thing is that we're hoping that I care nothing about the benefit. I just really want him to be able to keep his Medicaid. So Molly with Griffin Hammers, who is phenomenal, <laughs> um, kind of guided us through the PESS um, program, which is a part of social security and the PASS. Both of those we talked about and discussed. Um, I was able to go in a couple months ago, have a meeting with Social Security. And so once we submit that Sean does have his business up and going, um, he'll be able, his, Molly can explain it much better than I, but basically his um, assets with the business will be excluded. But, um, but yes, we do receive SSI um, benefits. Yes. Yeah. And I'll just add that there are lots of benefit planners out there in, in your state. So I can even drop a link in the chat box if, if folks are wondering how to get connected to one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Sheila and Michael, have you connected with anyone? Or, do, or maybe benefits so aren't a part of the same picture? Same thing, Michael does get um, SSI. Um, we do have benefit counselors here in Rhode Island. Um, I am not gonna lie, it's a very confusing system. Um, I love hearing from Sonia that she's connected with someone who's proficient in the language and, um, I could use more of that. Um, but for us, because we have taken all of anything we make and we've put it right back into the business, um, Michael has kept tips and things like that, but, um, he has his SSI and that's what we are. Uh, I feel like you're like right over my shoulder. It's hard. Uh, back is hard. So, but it's the same thing. Um, we've got to really become and over the next year as we've grown and he's going to be working more hours mindful because I'm the same way. I, I need, you know, his benefit package of it, the, the SSI, you know, we're going to have to report it and it'll end up he'll, you know, I envision him making more than that little $500 that he gets every month to you know, he buys socks and underwear with, do you know what I'm saying? So, so he, he does have that. Um, but I haven't found an easy way and COVID then made it more difficult, you know, offices were closed. Um, so I, I will tell individuals and families that's a tough part, but I think once we nail it down and we nail down those details, um, the rules are pretty clear. I just, I just need those, those written out for us but um benefits counselor for sure because you never want to be in a position that you know he couldn't go without a lot of the supports that he receives so we'll always have to be one eye on that um how much he's making his salary you know and make sure that it goes to the business and and so far that's just what we've done we've grown our business fantastic I, I would just, the only thing I would add is just going into that topic, just little bits at a time. It can tend to be a little overwhelming to take that one on all at once. It, it is, um, yeah. it is. And I know some moms that have like an app, you know, that they can like put in that this is how much, you know, my son or daughter has, has earned and it's so easy. And then other people, you've got to mail pages and pages and we've got to do better. It's on my list. Um, but we've got to do better at making it easier. If I'm not understanding it, there's Michael's can't figure this, you know, we, we've got to, how can we make this an easier process, for employment, wages, reporting, um, yeah. to, to, to make this sustainable. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. So before I go into the next question, I'll just clarify, cause I think someone is asking in the chat box, Sonia mentioned two work incentives, and I'll just clarify what those are. Property essential to self-support, PESS, and I'll drop that in the chat, and plan to achieve self-support, PESS, and I'll drop that in the chat. If I can quickly, I will try to get a link in there too. So the other question um, that um, I think we have time for is, um, can, can you speak to um, what you did around bootstrapping, sort of um, 
your, your experience and your process for getting started, assuming you didn't have like a big chunk of money just sitting in front of you ready to start a business with? Were there things you did to get up and running on the financial side of it? And just for the sake of consistency, Sonia and Sean, would you mind going first? Yeah, um, we were very fortunate. Um, my husband had just retired from the state of Florida after 37 years. So we had a little bit of money that we had put aside even before we knew um, about mm -hmm. you know, ER and the CBTAC program. So that has really helped us a lot. But my advice would be, um, just as I'm doing it right now, just a little bit in the time. We're kind of purchasing a few things at a time. And as the business gets up and going even more, we'll know what we'll need at that time. So um, so that's kind of where we are. Um, we were very fortunate in that respect. But um, but I'd say it's just like an elephant. Eat it one bite at a time and just get what you need when you need it. And just focus on the main thing, you know, at, at, you know, at, at, you know, initially, I would say. Great. Great advice. Sheila and Michael. Yep. So we kind of did the same. I retired. I took some of that money, but we went right into brick and mortar. You know, I'm not, I don't think that that's always, you know, the best idea of that's what everyone else is doing. Um, take what you're doing. Is it a hobby? Is it could potentially be, be, be a job? Don't be afraid to buy equipment secondhand. A lot of our stuff, like I said, we got on auction. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I wanted the, the nice shiny $5,000 new deli case, but you know what? We got one for um, much less. I mean, we just got a bunch of cabinets and counter space to do some, our shipping center. I paid a dollar on an auction. You know, now it took me a whole day, my whole family pulling those off the wall. I mean, it was dreadful. And I- And we only took one set. <laughs> I don't really, but you know, there's ways to be creative with your money. Um, like I said, I still consult for the DD council and I help with the classes. I take that money if we need it and, and expand, um, you know, into more things for us to sell. Same thing. We did it in just small little increments. What I did spend money on because we were, you know, going to be a coffee house. Um, I took out a $20,000 equipment loan and we got all brand new coffee equipment. Um, you know, I felt like that was important. That's where the money went, you know, and we, we've been very lucky that, that we paid that off. Um, so that's, you know, again, just make your list of priorities, um, and, and go small and then just continue to, yeah, roll your money into it. Great. Well, thank you. I think that's probably it for the questions in the chat, Sierra. Kick it back Thank to you. Thank you so much, Molly. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure that in our last five minutes together, that if anyone has questions for the group here, as well as Jonathan, this would be a great time to talk about that. And you can just put them in the chat. Um, and it looks like the NDI team has brought up the contact information for Jonathan, Sean and Sonia, and Michael and Sheila. Um, I support all of you from afar, all the way from Iowa. I cannot wait to um, visit Sean Goes Bananas and find your food trailer wherever you may be parked, as well as walk into Red, White, and Brew um, and buy all the coffee. I personally don't need the coffee, but I will support it. And I hear you also have pastries. Um, so I will do that. If you haven't already uh, checked out Facebook pages and pulled up different platforms and websites, please do so. The easiest way uh, to support entrepreneurs is to just follow, share, and tell everyone about them. Um, their contact information is here. So if you are wanting to reach out and build your own communities with people who just get it, and these people who are inspiring you, the best way is to just say, hey, I'd love to chat. Um, so feel free to send them all an email. And I'm going to kick it to the NDI team. Uh, Sean, Sonia, Michael, and Sheila, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. That was um, amazing. I was just kind of browsing the Facebook page and um, one of the things at the coffee shop, you know, it always amazes me how you do those little 
sort of pictures at the top of the coffee, you know, whether it's feathers or, you know, and you've got those. I, I need a lesson. They, they look gorgeous. And I do drink coffee. So when you start shipping it, I'm going to be ordering some. And as for the banana pudding, I live in a very small town in Tennessee and we have the National Banana Pudding Festival here. Mm-hmm. And I finally went there. I had been living here for a few years and I finally went and checked it out. And they have all kinds of amazing banana pudding. So I, I'm waiting for you to be able to ship yours or come and join the competition every year. It's every summer. It's, you should check it out. It, it's it's yummy. I love banana pudding. Anyway, um, do we have another slide that's got some information? Um, Jonathan, I th- who's running the slides? Um, okay, so upcoming events. Um, we are going to be celebra- celebrating... Um, with a an upcoming webinar beyond our disabilities celebrating black disabled entrepreneurs um and that is wednesday february the 28th so look for that sign up um we also are doing an xm webinar series and that is to really learn um if you're taking your business and looking at um export globally selling outside the united states um, so kind of how to really get into that and expand um, with that. So that's also coming up March through May. Um, if you're not already signed up for our uh, newsletter or to get information, um, Lexi just popped in the chat how to register for upcoming events. Um, also, I expect somewhere they're going to put in the um small business hub website there you go Lexi just put that in there as well that's how you can sign up too for um our newsletter the mailing list link is directly there um you know National Disability Institute through our small business hub we are here to help and support you in any way we can um you know we do partner with a lot of other folks as well as was mentioned you know Molly and her amazing gift on how to navigate the social security system um and Sierra and you know all the work that she has done as well and so but get a hold of us um if you want to here's some other links we will be sending out an email to everybody that's registered so you'll get all these links so don't worry if you're not picking them up from the chat right now you'll get it in an email um we have a streaming television channel so you can go visit that We're also partnering with Verizon. And if you use our individualized links so that we get credit that you've signed up through knowing us, um, that would be amazing. And they have $10,000 grants for small businesses. They also have a lot of learning um, and education and coaching and different things. Um, But thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you to our wonderful panel. Thanks, Sierra, for doing a just amazing job facilitating that and to Jonathan and all of his expertise Um, and of course to our team who's behind the scenes making this happen and Molly for the Q&A piece so it takes a village right whether it's self-determination or running a webinar it it takes a team Um, and here is our team Um, so thank you so much and hope you can join us again on another webinar